Up next, a look at a new light, new light strategy game from Bicycle Cards, The Alpha. Uh, the Alpha was designed by Ralph Rosario and features breathtaking art by Andrew Hutchinson. The game is scheduled to be released mid-June 2020 by Bicycle, the United States playing card company. For a look at what you get with a copy of The Alpha, check out our unboxing video over on YouTube. You can find a link to that in the show notes. Now, I gotta say, the most shocking thing you'll find during that video was that The Alpha doesn't have any cards. Like, not only is it not a card game, there are no cards in this box, which I just assumed would be in there because it's from Bicycle, like the, the card game company. I figured I was getting a card-based game. Now, taking a quick look at Bicycle's website, they do have a few other non-card-based games, but they're usually related to cards like Pokino or other card game adjacent games. I, plus, you know what? Except for the lack of cards, everything else is top-notch. Everything's good. Uh, it just wasn't what I expected. There's a nice four-fold mounted board, some really cool wolf meeples, uh, some nice thick tiles, some really confusing dice that honestly don't make any sense. Like, it's probably worth watching an unboxing video just to see me get totally confused by these dice. Uh, they do make sense once you start playing, but wow, like, just odd dice. These well, sixes. Well, speaking of playing the game, how about you give us a quick overview of how the alpha plays? All right, you start by laying out the board. You place a wolf on the food track, which is the main thing on the board. It's also the score track. It shows your score at uh, five. Uh, then you're going to put a number of hunt tiles, so different tiles representing different things, different types of prey, based on the number of players. Some of these are small prey, some are large prey. Some go below the board, which represents the near forest, and some go above the board, which is the deep forest. You then play through the following phases in order, the first being stock. Players, in turn, are going to place wolves on their hunts. There are some special placement rules for this, but... Uh, like the uh, only one wolf can be on the livestock tile and the scavenge spots can have any number of wolves, but only one per player, for example. But there's some other ones. Another important note is that if you go to the deep woods, it costs you one food. So you're losing points to go hunt in the deep woods. Next is catch. This is represents the chase. Uh, your wolves trying to hunt the prey and it's done by rolling a die at each of the hunts. Results include a failed hunt, which is an X. A successful hunt, which will be a number, which is the number of food you're going to get. A wounded prey, which will then turn to carrion next turn. This is represented by a C and a number. And then also there's one special die for the livestock hunt, which can result in a wolf getting killed, getting shot and killed and removed from the game. Once you've rolled all your catches, you then go back through each hunt and resolve them. I gotta admit, that seemed a little weird to me. I don't know why you wouldn't do both at once, but as written, you roll all the dice, then you go back and resolve them. At each successful hunt, you determine which wolf pack is dominant. This is pure area control. The player with the most wolves is dominant. If players are tied, multiple packs are dominant. The dominant hunts packs then decide if they're gonna fight for the food or share it with the other dominant packs. Now, this is potentially multiplayer prisoner's dilemma with two or more players. It can be up to six players if all six players have the same number of wolves in the spot. Uh, typical player uh, prisoner's dilemma, if one pack out of all of them fights, they get all the food. If multiple packs fight, each wolf in that, those packs, or each pack, a wolf from each pack, sorry, a wolf from each pack gets hurt. And any packs left share the food. If all packs share, then you divide the food up equally. Now, at the end of each round, um, you take your wolves back from all the hunts. Injured wolves move to a healing spot. Any that are on the healing spot get returned. The player with the most food becomes the new alpha, first player. And then any prey that were injured get flipped to the carrion side. And any carrion that were there last turn get flipped back to their normal side. You end up doing this for a total of four, five turns. Five turns, which represent five weeks. At the end of the fifth week, whoever has the most food is the game. Now, this is no, just an overview. I, this is not a full rules tutorial. There are some small details I completely skipped over, like how carrying and scavenging works and why certain things don't have dice and some do. Don't worry about that right now. Just want to get the general overview. Honestly, I can't help but think about Blood Bowl when you're describing some of these man mechanics and the special dice. I, you know, I, turn, I don't know. I turn don't over. see the Blood Bowl here, but I guess that's just hearing it, not seeing it. I, you know, you you turn you turn over when you re to recover, and you wait. You know, all, <laughs> all the recovery rules. I don't know. 
Fair enough. Now, I got to say, uh, overall, the alpha for me was uh, just a bunch of surprises stacked on top of each other. Like, first off, I was surprised to know that Bicycle was making hobby board games. Now, I've learned since then, this is actually their second wave of trying to break into the hobby board game market. And I got to say, I looked up those previous games, and it looks like they're doing a better job this time. Well, it seems like they've really gone all out with the product quality to help them stand out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the second thing I was shocked to learn is it wasn't a card game. Basically what I mentioned already, right? The first, the, like the name Bicycle, I expect a card game. Like there are plenty of great card games out there. Some of my favorite games are card games. It just, to me, would have made sense to have Bicycle make a card game. So with a little bit of history behind this, uh, Bicycle is one brand of the U.S. playing card company who are now, as of December last year, owned by Kartenbundi a Belgium-based company self-described as the world's largest manufacturer and distributor of playing cards and board games. Huh. Added on to that, there was a partnership between Hasbro and Cardamonde, who seemed to produce most of Hasbro's products outside the U.S. Uh, Bicycle alone generated about $118 million in revenue in the year prior to their acquisition. Uh, which probably leads to my next point, which is, how nice this game looks. So the, the production quality, like the components are top notch. And I guess when you're as big a company as Bicycle, you can afford to make a very well produced board game. Then finally, the, the biggest shock to me, probably out of all of them, I don't know the card thing's the biggest shock. Second biggest shock is just how solid a game this is. Like when I was first contacted about reviewing this game and another game called The Exchange, that's their two new light strategy games, I wasn't expecting much at all from these. I thought maybe I'd end up with a party game that I could break out maybe on New Year's or maybe a light, simple game to play with the kids. And the alpha is actually a step up from that. Though I got to admit, not that big a step. It's what I would consider an excellent gateway game, like a great game for new gamers. It takes some rather basic mechanics, presents them in a simple and pure way. First off, you got area control system where players are placing their wolves to see who can control each spot. It's followed up by a very Ameritrash output randomness system where you're rolling your dice to see if you actually happen to get food or not. That's uh, very much a push your luck mechanic. And then you have what's multiplayer prisoner's dilemma when you get to the conflicts. It's do you fight or not? If one person fights, they win. If no one fights, you all win. Added to this are some neat bits, like uh, the livestock in particular, is get a ton of food, get a bit of food, get away free or die. And there is a 50-50 chance you're going to die by going after that, which is neat because that becomes a great catch-up mechanic. Because if you're falling behind, you take your chance on the livestock, which just kind of makes sense, right? And you actually have to look at risk versus reward when picking where to hunt. And this is where I think the game started to shine was with showing it to my kids and them seeing that risk versus reward mechanic and how it works. So I think there are also some potential drawbacks for some kids though, right? Well, the thing is, this is not a happy, cute animal game, right? So there could be some problems with some families it, with, with the content of this game. This is a game about wolves hunting and killing and eating other animals. And when the packs hunt, uh, they can fight each other. So you have direct conflict. You have carrion, which the art's pretty photorealistic. So you've got a rotting carcass there right on the cards. And then there's the whole fact that your wolf can die while hunting livestock. Not all of that's going to be for every family. Now, I will say my kids loved it. Like, I was a little worried they might not be into this, but they thought it was really cool. And they liked the fact that it was, they kept saying, oh, it's realistic. It's, it's so realistic. I like that it's really, I like that it feels like we're hunting. And I like that if we go after the sheep from the farmer, might shoot us. And they thought that was really cool that the game was presented in a realistic way. And I have to say, I'm not one to um, cartoonify reality for my kids. Animals mm -hmm. kills things. The food web is real and an important thing to learn in school and, you know, in the classes yep. that they're taking. Uh, and it's not that the game is graphic about things, even if some, no. you know, some of the gra some of the, uh, the art is realistic. It's not graphic. It simply presents situations to uh, some that some children may not be ready for yet. And and I, if I remember correctly, it's not actually designed for kids based on the, the age on Board Game Geek. I don't remember what it is Four, off the top 14, of my head. 14 is the age on Board Game Geek. Yeah, so you're not looking at a kid's game there anyway. A 14-year-old should have no problem with this theme. Now, while the components are great, the game plays decent. 
this isn't groundbreaking in any way. It's it, it's nothing, to be honest, nothing special. It does some pretty basic hobby board game things and does them well enough, but that's about it. Like, except for the area control element of the game, there is a ton of randomness. Like, yes, you get to pick where your wolves go, so you have full control of that, but then they could go there and just roll a miss and get nothing, right? There's that, that high output randomness, which is not something that a lot of strategy gamers are going to enjoy. Plus, it's really hard to plan ahead because you never know what's going to happen because of the dice. Yeah, and as we know, randomness is a huge dividing line for many gamers and can make or break a game in that hobby community. Yeah, due to that, I have no idea how this is going to play out. Like, to be honest, when this comes out later next month, I don't know how this is going to get reviewed. I have looked at a couple other reviews, and some people are digging it, and a lot of people are disliking it. So we'll see. Overall, I personally think this wolf based Parade into the deep woods of hobby gaming from Bicycle is a very solid game. It's a solid attempt. It looks fantastic. It plays well. I don't think it's going to win over the hobby game market or any hobby gamers, but I think it's a pretty good gateway game, and it's a good teaching tool for younger gamers, especially in teaching risk versus reward and the whole brilliance of the prisoner's dilemma. The prisoner's dilemma is a really neat mechanic, and this is it in a very pure basic form. There's there's no, nothing shiny. There's nothing modifying it. It just here it is. Here's a prisoner's dilemma. You have two options. You either both go for it and you both get rewarded or only one of you goes for it and they get everything. Which way do you go? And if you both go for it, you both get punished. Sorry, that's your three basic outcomes of the prison dilemma. It's there in all its glory, which is really, they did a good job of, I think, capturing that mechanic. And to be honest, there's a lot of tie into theme here that you wouldn't expect. Like the fact that the wolf packs can fight or share. The fact that going hunting for livestock is dangerous. The fact that it's harder to pull down a bison than it is to catch a rabbit. But if you pull down the bison and you're successful, you get a ton more food. That's all in the game. So I think they did a good job of capturing that theme with the mechanics they have. Yeah, no, I think this is going to be a fantastic game to find in your scholar's choices mm -hmm. uh, or other more family and educationally oriented game stores. It's not something that your FLGS is necessarily going to put up on their front shelf and push. But... That's to say, to you know, that being said, there is definitely a place for this game, especially mm -hmm. in the educational and entry level gaming market. Yeah, I could also see this at a, at a, well, in Canada, at least Toys R Us or Target or Zellers or right. no more Zellers, but uh, <laughs> entry Walmart, level. Yeah, yeah. Walmart or whatever. I can definitely see it and possibly do well. I don't know how well the box would sell there because it doesn't look like a mass market game. But right. you know what? Hobby games are getting more and more common in those areas, especially with the Ravensburger games all being popular. I, I think this is going to fit that niche better than, you know, like you said, the local game store. I'm not, I can't see our local store really pushing this one and it doing that well for them. Right. Well, for a more in-depth review, look at the alpha, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews.